agenda for the Pekin County Board of County Commissioners. Today is Tuesday, August the 28th, 2018. First item on our agenda is commercial recreation. Cindy Hubin with the Community Development Department. And as a group of county employees from various departments, we thought we should come together and talk a little bit about commercial recreation in the county and try to get some direction from the Board of County Commissioners about whether or not you feel this is a priority for us to look at in the coming years. Currently, there's sort of a there's a disconnected way to deal with the overall commercial recreational activities within Pitkin County. And they deal with GR and our county roads, with Gary and open space. Peter Ward has been helping us this summer with our special events uh, related to commercial recreation in many cases um, with our community development department and obviously Alex has to deal with a lot of the commercial recreation as it relates to safety and operations in Pitkin County. So we have all sat down together and talked about the, the various aspects of commercial recreation in Pitkin County and thought we should come to the board and let you know kind of where each department stands and then um, get some direction from you as to whether or not you feel a more coordinated effort might be appropriate for the county. So starting off with um, Pitkin County's Community Development Department, as you know, we take a look at special events as one aspect of commercial recreation. We also look at commercial recreation from uh, a larger ongoing basis, but to tell you the truth, we really have not had the capacity within um, the Community Development Department to regulate, nor do we feel our our regulations are up to speed with what would be required to regulate and enforce ongoing commercial recreation uh, operations. And um, we feel like that in itself uh, provides somewhat of a um, disjointed message to the public. And oftentimes we get questions and um, we really don't feel we have a great direction to provide to the public on these um, activities. And thirdly, I know that you know that we have uh, created in the code the, the commercial, well, the, the venue um, type of our special review for venues, such as um, special events venues throughout the county, which roll into this whole type of commercial and commercial recreational and um, various special events throughout the county. So with that, I think um, I'll just let the other folks talk a little bit about how these various activities work in their departments and what they may or may not feel is important from their perspective uh, relative to coordinating with community development and any of the other departments. Um, I know probably, Gary, your department has the biggest role and already does um, monitor and provide um, permitting system, a permitting system for activities on open space um, properties. So, Sure. Um, I'm Gary Tenenbaum. I'm the director of Pitkin County Open Space. And about, I think it's about six years ago, uh, the Open Space and Trails Department changed its regulations, or you guys changed the regulations to allow the Open Space Department to permit commercial and special uses. In the past, we were very um, dependent on community development to do commercial use permitting and special use permitting. And as you heard from Cindy, they weren't, it wasn't a very comprehensive system. So when the commissioners back in the day wanted the rafting companies permitted, all the rafting companies had to come in and get permitted. And then, you know, what about the fishing guides and the paragliders and, and, there's, and the dog walkers and the biking? There's so much commercial use that happens. So about six or seven years ago, we came into the commissioners and asked for a change for the Open Space and Trails Department to manage commercial and special use that happens solely on Pickin County open space. And when we hired Janet about, was it about six years ago, Janet Urquhart, who's behind me, it became about a third of her position is to administer this program. 
And what we do now is we permit all commercial and special events. Most of our management plans lay out the terms of what they should be doing, and we, you know, then administer it. But it takes a, a third of a staff person's time. Our rangers are always on referrals and on the actual events themselves because they have to monitor the events. And um, we then, you know, obviously once you have that event go beyond the open space and trails and lands, then we have to start working with community development, public works, the sheriff's office on how do you coordinate all of that. I think this year we had one special event that, you know, basically gave us all pause about how are we doing this? Because it was throughout the entire county, it hit open space, it hit roads, and and how do you then work together to make it cohesive? And how do you make it fair? If For us, open space, we wanted to make it fair. If we're going to charge the commercial operators to um, get a permit, the fishing guides should have the permit too. And the dog walkers that are out there, anyone who's doing commercial guiding needs to come under permit. And I think right now, everyone we know who does commercial activities on open space is permitted. Every special event that happens is permitted. We also made sure our fees are reasonable. Um, we need to relook that because I don't think it's covering all the staff time, but unlike a department like community development, the open space fund is a little um, different and we never thought we had to capture every single dollar, but we do need to relook that and we need to come back to you guys to see what your feelings are on that because in the end, commercial and special events should be paying their own way because mostly they're making money off of the open spaces that the citizens have spent a lot of money protecting. So um, how do we do that in the future? So we're here to see how the bigger discussion between all the departments can be potentially coordinated, and if not like with one specific person, but we'd love to have the regulations that ComDev does or Public Works does pretty consistent with the regulations that we do. All right, next. Thanks, Gary. Yeah, or turn it down. We it, can't it, turn these off, I don't think. It's very echoey. It's, it's really loud from my hearing. It's kind of... She just left the room when she comes back. Okay. No, she's right there. No, 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 no. Our tech it's Melissa, yeah. She can't turn these off, though. I think we have to change it on this computer here. Yeah. If you want to mute, is yours muted? No. I can also hear Greg writing through the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> you can see kind of what my world does. I don't know. I'm trying to. We're trying to figure it out. I'm going to learn that <laughs> dot dash dash dash. Mm. Exclamation. Let's try this again. Oh, that's Pull it closer to you, not closer farther to away. You, she says. Okay. Try it. Let's go. I'm Gr Fielding, the county engineer. Whoa. Hi, Gr. And I am representing Public Works, and uh, our oversight of the county rightways uh, kind of comes in and out of this conversation in a number of different ways. Uh, for special events, uh, we are one of the referrals if that special event is proposed to use the road for part of the event itself. And so uh, things like the local cycling races, uh, we're a referral in the beginning of the year. They let us know when they're going to uh, have their races on what roads and what locations, and we actually work with uh, that permittee and, and make sure that when we're doing our road cleaning that we try to get out there before an event or uh, try to work around those uh, events a little bit with mowing operations or things like that in operational uh, realm. But there is a whole other side of it uh, where we have been hands off uh, for a long time. And things like uh, commercial operations that might need a permit from open space and trails, they do not need a permit from uh, public works to go ahead and do the same sort of operation. Uh, an example of that would might be you know, bicycle shuttles up to Ashcroft or up to the Bells, um, the Jeep tours that go up on the county roads that are that, uh, that go up, say Richmond Hill area and things of that nature. Uh, and so we've been we've been part of this conversation uh, for a while, but it, it's honestly something that our road maintenance and management plan doesn't truly contemplate right now uh, as far as, you know, what level of 
oversight that we really want to have on those and where does that line truly lie? Yeah, it's, uh, we had an Could event. You just, just give your name for the public yeah, record. So we my name is Peter Ward. I'm the special events permit coordinator. Um, you know, we had non-compliance issues with a repeating event um, that has happened in the past five years. Um, and, you know, they went through the permit application process, and, you know, we, we gave them a set of, you know, conditions and they didn't meet those conditions and we denied their permit however they ran the event um, regardless and the only enforcement you know we were able to do with the event is with the open space um, rangers and Alex was also following the event and noticing you know violations of um, conditions that we would have had in the permit had they gotten it um, and you know, it's it's just unfortunate that, you know, the level or standard of quality for events around here is very high. Um, and to have organizers come in here and not, you know, follow that same standard is, you know, it's uh, compromising the community's quality for living here and the resources that we pay for. Yeah, George. I, just a clarification, Peter. Uh, so are, are you in ComDev? Or? Yep. But, but Gary, you said that Janet, through Open Space, spends about a third of her time on permitting. Mm -hmm. So there's sort of an overlap there in terms of, is it one of the, one of the things you're bringing for us to discuss? Is your mic on, George? George's mic is yeah, on. That's fine. She just yelled. Uh, is to try to better coordinate who's doing what rather than having several people try to uh, be stepping on each other's toes per se it's sort of a mixed message out in the public you know whether or not you need a permit or you don't need a permit if you're on open space land or just other county land jurisdiction um, so I think yes I mean Gary is very specifically permitting for lands that are under under the open space and trails jurisdiction so it's a um, it's different than what Peter's been doing, which are permits outside. And those are special events mm -hmm. that Peter's been working on primarily, not special reviews for commercial recreational operations. There are, there's, there are a lot of moving parts that are kind of related here. Okay. One thing on, just on that point, specific to this event, so Friday afternoon before the event when it became clear that we were not going to give them a permit, I'm on the phone with Colorado State Patrol trying to explain to them the difference between within Pitkin County that we have two different permitting agencies, which was very awkward, you know, to try and explain the difference between them talking about trails and us about the county roads and, and how that all fit together. Just to me, I was like, wow, this is, this is really uncomfortable and, and just doesn't make sense to try and explain that to some outside agency. So that to me was a, a real <laughs> moment of clarity. <laughs> Rachel? Yeah, I was just going to ask, um, do we have a decent fining program or protocol in place? I mean, what was the penalty these people got other than a letter of censure? Uh, they paid... I think it was $2,000 total citation from open space. Um, one violation was their third, which was the maximum penalty of $1,000 for unauthorized commercial activity. And then the other was also a third offense for um, vandalism on the trail for spray paint that they used to mark the route. Okay. I mean, I, I just, it's the first time they were cited and paid. I'm not the first time cited, but, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm kind of wondering if those are sufficient to really deter people in the future um, or had they just built it into a cost of their program because they so wanted to showcase the Roaring Fork Valley um, but you're absolutely right in terms of the concerns for the citizens when we have had permitted races come through you know there's requirements of you know crossing guards at intersections and you know all sorts of uh, very important safety measures both for the participants and, and our citizens and uh, you know, that's been something we've wanted to manage in so many ways because of people who are out there enjoying it for the day and there's not even any, <coughs> pardon me, public notice 
because they're doing it illegally that this event is happening. And um, so I'm, I'm, I'm certainly willing to look at how do we combine and make this simpler, um, that there's no wrong door and that people can get, you know, one or, pardon me. <coughs> That's just, That's yeah, really. One or two meetings, you know, with the same group and not feel like it's two different departments or two different hurdles, uh, and, and then the departments themselves are more aware of what's going on, what requests are being made. But uh, I think a fine scale is in order. Well, yeah, and I, and Rachel, that's a really good point, but you, because it's easier just to pay after the fact, right? Um, but yeah, it should be a combination of what the fees would have cost, what the incidentals would have cost, estimated, and a fine for doing it without a permit. So they're having to pay for the process they avoided by saying it's just easier just to pay the fine. And so we don't want to, we don't want to incentivize people to do it that way. And I think having a comprehensive combined process is better communication for everybody involved. Um, the only thing I'm wondering is which department do we put it under? How do we staff it? I'm in the middle of this, so we'll flip the coin. I've got a penny here. Um, but yeah, coming up, oh, we can put it in the sheriff's office. <laughs> but I, I think going in that direction is a good thing. And real quick, um, I'll, I have another issue about events that may or not have occurred or come to my attention because of an illegal event, but I'll come back to it when I, the other commissioners have commented on this. Just don't let me forget. I think, Greg, yeah, and then Steve. I would just say I'd, I really appreciate you coming in. I, I'm looking at this from both sides. I've been an applicant in the past, and I'd certainly be an advocate for something that's streamlined, you know, single point of contact, maybe an ombudsman or somebody who can guide you, an applicant through a process, which would be very complicated and a little bit intimidating perhaps. Uh, but also, I remember back in the old days, when we were in the film business, we would have to put a deposit down. And I think we, at one point we had to put a $10,000 deposit down in order to operate. And if we didn't meet all the criteria, we'd lose that, that deposit. And so I'm just wondering, was the cost of doing business worth paying the, you know, the $2,000 fine? It was much easier just to pay the fine after all the violations and, and think, well, okay, maybe there's a deposit and maybe they don't get it back unless they cooperate. But I'd like to look at it from the point of view of an applicant. So let's make it more thorough and streamlined and comprehensive, uh, ideally. And I, I see everything you've said here and what everyone else has said like that's where we're going. I appreciate that, but I'm wondering, so do we need to hire another full-time employee to, to do this, or can we consolidate? We, um, I think all of our individual departments don't feel that we currently have the capacity to uh, take on, you know, this, this streamlining and coordinated project without hiring someone at least on a part-time basis to, to work on you know, pulling all this together and then managing it, uh, because it, we see this position as one that, you know, processes that actually first of all coordinates the effort, then processes the applications, and then monitors and enforces mm -hmm. the applications. Um, there is money so. coming in. Could it be a could it be a profit center right. for the county? Uh, <laughs> no, not so not far. Not. It hasn't been a profit center, but but it is something to yeah. look add in terms of fees there are fees involved so that can go towards that position but then we need to keep in mind we have two people now doing a part job so we have two people that you know we don't want to dissolve their positions or part of their position and have them work half time because we have another person doing half of their job peter so is a temporary we were lucky enough to get some temporary money this summer and hire Peter. So um, this is, Peter's position is not a permanent position with the county. We just really knew that we could not so keep up with the special Maybe would fold events. into something more permanent. If they go that way. Steve? Yeah, taking into account everybody's comments and looking, looks like the alternative three is the direction we should go develop a com comprehensive approach. You do mention requesting a new position um, we have two different departments, both on the second floor of our new building, <laughs> with two different people working on this, and that lends itself to the possibility of having either a coordination between the two or having just one person, one department responsible for the permits. 
but it would be on the second floor of our new building that somebody would go to to get their permit. And I think that would simplify it for the public. And looking at the single stream process, and like Greg was saying, I think we could provide a better public service for the people applying for such permits at the same time as then uh, letting the public know when events are happening and having having a little better handle on what actually happens out there. So then what do we do with when somebody totally ignores it and just does the, the big event? Um, <laughs> I think we, we need to it. have an, an you know, definitely have some sort of an enforcement thing and I like your line in the letter to them saying you're talking about how it's going to be many years before they they get another permit and I guess they might just come in and run the run the event again without getting a permit but yeah you know if I could that really makes me what I thought is that have we contacted groups like the Better Business Bureau of Colorado or others to let them know that there's been these problems because paying us a fine is one thing having it start to impact their ability to get permits in other communities or wherever they do their signing up or their insurance liability company even to let them send the same censure letter to other parties that they do business with and let them know you know it's not as if you can just ignore us uh, and it won't have repercussions on your business practices. So I would try to find ways to reach out and get this letter circulating. Well, and it's a matter of public safety that we've talked about um, with Alex, and you know, also safety for um, the participants who you know aren't, exactly. aren't necessarily aware that you know, the organizers operated. not doing the necessary um, steps to get you know authorization for using. Um, but yeah, the public safety thing is a very large component, and you know the public resources that go into staffing um, poorly organized events that you know they're not paying for. We also need to look into the opportunity or the possibility of stopping the event midstream. I'm sorry, but we're, we're cutting you off here. I'm sorry, you people who've paid a fee to to participate in this event. You need to go back to the organizers of this event and get your money back because they didn't follow the rules and regs, and so we're. Yeah, but that's another opportunity. George? Um, so I, I could see the need to consolidate uh, under one department or the other and to have one person in charge. Uh, I could see that it should uh, uh, pay for it, pay for its own way, like we asked ComDev to do. Um, my, uh, I guess my problem is, or my question is, and I've, I've voiced this in the past, is I don't think we can or should be entertaining a continuation of growth of special events in the county. Uh, everybody wants to come here. Everybody sees this as a marketing opportunity for their uh, specific event to, to be able to generate uh, uh, participants saying, oh, you're going to come and, and ride through on the Rio Grande Trail, and you're going to go up to the Maroon Bells and to Ashcroft. And, and I think at some point we have to, and I think we've worked on this in the past, limit the number of special events we have, uh, limit the timing of those events so that not every weekend in the summer uh, this county and, and the citizens are impacted by people from uh, within the community, our nonprofits, but then uh, all the organizations that are outside the community who, who again see this as a, as a great place to run their event. So I, I think we need to revisit the, uh, the scope and the uh, amount and the, and the number of events. And I think in the past, we've, I've had Mike Kramer uh, sort of put together a chart of uh, how many events are actually taking place on, on the weekends. Uh, and people, we need to look at perhaps changing dates, uh, looking at off seasons. Uh, but I think, um, I think, I don't want to see us become a Telluride where every weekend is a special event and it's a huge impact on the community. Carrie, please. Um, and, and George's point is is one of the reasons why in a lot of our management plans and a lot of our permits are set up trying not to do that. But the hardest part of what we have found is 
the events are not necessarily just Picking County. They're the city of Aspen or the town of Snowman's Village or town of Basalt. And so I think from you guys' perspective is to try to work with the other municipalities because it's those special events that are coming to them. They get a permit in Aspen. It's then we're the bad people. We're always looked at as bad people. I remember when the Ride the Rockies originally wanted to come in. You know, we if we want to limit the amount of growth and the amount of events, it's really difficult when the city is promoting those and the town is promoting those on a large level. The Ragnars, the Tough Mudders, on and all these different events because we're kind of the link in their systems, and it's it's just it's a big issue, and I agree with you, and it's just. It's difficult to do without getting the municipalities on board. So, you know, I, I think it would be great if, if you guys are all in favor of that for basically us to go back and try to figure out a proposal on how to, how to bring a coordinated system in and how to do that. Because one of the things I would be very cautious about is trying to make it pay its own way. There are a lot of little businesses in, mm -hmm. in, in our area. There's... You know, do you charge, how much do you charge, you know, somebody who wants to do a small little photo shoot compared to, you know, a Jeep commercial? And so there, there's different levels that really need some thought about about trying to make this pay its own way because, you know, we've had a big issue with one of our local guides coming in and be like, why do I have to pay this? I don't make as much money as a Blazing Adventure, so I'm paying just as much as a Blazing Adventure. So I think there's going to be, need to be some thought on how we how we go about um, a sliding charge. scale, a, a sliding scale that makes sense. But uh, I definitely, um, to Greg's point, on the the we we do charge a bond on some of our project on some of these special events, and we need to revisit that to make sure that those you know those those bonds are 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 enough to handle you know something like. You know, when we charge them two thousand dollars, our system's not set up perfectly for the fine. At least we had a fine, but our system's not set up perfect for the commercial use fine. Because if that event made, you know, one hundred and fifty, two hundred thousand dollars, two thousand dollars, not a big deal. So build and, it into your budget. Right. That's what they do. So it's I don't know. It's there's a lot of work, but if you guys all agree, I think we can go back and really come up with. A little more information for you guys to to make that decision on how to staff it and how to change the code to truly um, in place change both our codes and the com dev codes to try to figure all that stuff out we just wanted to kind of get where you guys are at but I think George's point in talking about the growth of events is something where it's 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 not an easy one um, and I, I had multiple jurisdictions down here too. We need to we have a cooperative, some, some kind of system with the, you know, not just City of Aspen, Basalt, and Snowmass Village, but CDOT, et cetera, because they're all part of that process. And um, it'd be great if people had to come to Picking County first for their permits and then go to the municipalities. <laughs> but that might not always happen. Rachel, you had one, then I have well, one last thing I need to It was to. just what you were going to say. And, and part of this work has to be how we're coordinated better with the city <coughs> or Snowmass for that. Or matter. Basalt. Okay, so now before we, thank you, I think we've provided you direction. I know this will be coming back to us, but I had a recent call from a constituent for an event that was on Sunnyside Trail, and the event was marked. They knew when the event was, but people were training a couple days before, and that became a very dangerous situation for people who were just, you know, using that trail recreationally. And I've never known us to put signs up about trainees could be on the trails. But so people were up there riding Sunnyside, and people who were hiking it had to literally jump out of the way because they were totally unprepared for that kind of activity. So I don't know how we manage that. I'd never thought of that in the past. Well, that, I mean, honestly, you manage it by we forgot the other jurisdiction we have to work with is the Forest Service. Yeah, okay. Because, like, on Sunnyside, the Forest Service is they're the ones who probably permitted any of that events. And in your stipulations and your requirements, you can say that you need to limit your participants um the amount of training time and if you need to do training time we got to figure you got to put it within just going that up there on their own and training yeah. a couple days before yeah, but and still you can put that yeah. in your 
permit. And hopefully be able to manage that, but also the signage was posted for the event only, not for any pre-event activity. That's what caught, caught the hikers and walkers off, off guard. So, and I can just imagine they're like, the event's tomorrow, you know, why are these guys whipping by me? So I think that's something we need to take into this picture too. That was a good point brought forward. Great so is the plan to, to reach out to the other municipalities and for a service in order to try to coordinate, you know, they may have the same problem and they're wondering the same questions and shouldn't we have a signal point of contact or someone, it makes it easier for everyone really. So I'm hoping they would be enthusiastic about this, but it's part of the part of the, the, the next step is to reach out to them. I assume we definitely will be. Well, we out. have. I mean, um, that's I mean, we coordinate with the other agencies. Um, it's 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 not so much the necessarily the coordination. It's how you deal with the amounts of these events and how right. you know if the city of Aspen <coughs> or Snowmass is courting Ragnar. Ragnar needs more than just a town of Snowmass Village, so the, it, that's the difficult thing, and I think it's it sometimes has to go to the elected officials to really work with, to just be able to do that. We'll we'll definitely be reaching out, but hopefully over time we can really work with the other elected boards to get them up to speed on it because they look at it as an economic growth, and you know we we're a little different on that because we're not necessarily seeing that next phase of the economic growth on that. So we'll definitely reach out to the city and the Forest Service and the town and uh, the tourism boards and stuff like that. But it, Well, I think part of that should be to the other municipalities. If you have an event that's going to impact the county, before you totally permit and approve your permit, you come to the county so you can be working for joint issue of permits. What? Yeah, Rachel? Yeah, um, I was just going to say, I think the first step is really talking with the Snowmass Tourism and Marketing Board as well as to the extent there's a Chamber of Commerce um, that's active in basalt events. I don't know if they're the ones who bring them in or pursue them. But um, we haven't had a, or my memory slipping, a joint meeting with the town of Snowmass Village this year. We did last year up at the Snowmass Center. And this seems like it would be at least one topic if we are able to it have it. might have a, even been two years ago that we Yeah, met it's just been a little while. I mean, we, we've had EOTC meetings up there and I think yeah. discussing other things, but um, it, it might be something to, to try to pull in when we are talking to the electeds. Just last question for, for Alex maybe is that uh, when does it become an enforcement issue? If it's, if it's public safety, I can see you stepping in, but if it's a property violation or a, a crowded permit violation what do you guys do well if it's if it's if it's any violation of the colorado revised statutes and it's a criminal code then then we'll just handle it like we do anything else um it, it we don't really have a, a hand in it when it becomes a violation of permits right so if they're violating the permit because we're a referring agency to the permit process we're not we don't do any permitting ourselves so you know we would we would work with whoever it is that's making the the uh, allegation of the violation of the crime and investigate it and then follow up uh, that way, but in terms of violation of permits, we wouldn't have any anything to do with that. We have a county code enforcement officer that we would utilize in that regard. Or this summer, we've been lucky enough to have Peter monitoring the events. But is there anybody who could step in and call the event midstream if they were in violation? If they didn't come in for a permit and we found out during the event, could we not go? That's something we need to look into. Could we not just put a halt to it, say you're done? I don't care if you've crossed the finish line, you're done. We'll have to check into that because I don't think we we have never, I mean, we knew bikes, we knew that tour was coming through. We saw it happening. Could we actually just step in front of it and stop Literally, it? Literally, physically. Ah, uh, that's, that, that's something we'll look into, but, you know. Good to know. Yeah, well, you so do it if somebody was robbing a bank, thought. you'd step in the middle of it. So it's kind of the same thing, you know. Right. So we just need to find yeah. a way that. Well, the hardest that part safely. on some of them is the Colorado State Patrol is there, <laughs> monitoring this. Well, working these events, they they obviously pay for the Colorado State Patrol to be there. How do we work with the state agencies to them get them to stop it? To say there's they didn't not get a permit the local in jurisdiction that didn't give them the permit. Yeah, was well, that abating, abating, and. A, <laughs> it, it it does sound like there's a lot of coordination that needs to occur and there's a deeper dive here than just do we need additional staff to help doing this 
Um, I, I can see any number of different things where perhaps we pass uh, code to, to make it a enforceable offense of the sheriff's department at a certain level or certain magnitude, uh, you know, and then you just brought up the coordination with the state patrol for the first time of is this on their checklist even at this point in time um, that uh, yeah. before they agree to give their services, uh, I'd like to see the contract in place for each of the counties where you're planning on running the event. And I don't know that they do that. No, I don't think they do. I, I think one of the bigger issues for us from, from the sheriff's office standpoint, and I'll represent kind of all the public safety in this, because the folks that, that we routinely deal with in this, these permitting processes are, are uh, Aspen Ambulance, you know, the fire department, uh, and the various other law enforcement and fire and EMS agencies up and down the valley. For us, it's we need the time in the permitting process to get ahead of some of the issues that we see in the process in the permit process. And right now, we're just not getting that. We're getting permits that are coming in two weeks before the event. And if we see a major issue, no one has time to make any changes. So things like bike tours of color or the, the special event that went awry, um, it went awry because we had a meeting two weeks prior to the event, and there was really wasn't a ton of time. Rolling. It wasn't anyone, anyone's fault here. It was just that's how the process goes right now. So I yeah. think whether it's a higher level of coordination or um, more collaboration between the two individuals that are currently doing it, I think we'll be able to get out ahead of some of these issues that we're currently falling short on. Yeah. Uh, I think sometimes it's a bit of a strategy from these organizers to wait to the last minute for sure. so that mm -hmm. uh, nobody has time to respond reasonably. Yeah. I mean, say uh, no. often we don't even have a regular scheduled board meeting in that same time period for staff to bring it to us if it's of, of major concern. So I think there's a little bit of deliberate gaming going on there. Go ahead, Cindy. Yeah, I just also wanted to mention that um, we've been updating all the master plans for the various neighborhoods, and there have been a number of neighborhoods who have talked about special events becoming, you know, just too much, um, too much on the roadways, um, traffic-wise, or too much going through the neighborhood and on the National Forest or whatever it might be, um, that it's becoming a disturbance to a certain extent to some of the neighborhoods, and they're concerned about that. And we can also, one of the things is, is as you guys deliberate this and really try to understand what the, how much growth, how much, how many events you want and all that stuff is really you know, we can we can really put into codes that you have to submit your application a certain amount of time in advance or you just don't get it. You don't get it at all. Forest oh, Service is pretty clear. If you don't get your events in early enough, we're just not processing it and you're not doing it. But then you have to have the fine structure in place to actually do something about it if they still come in. But that, that is a deliberation, but that comes from you guys to, like, really tell us, okay, hey, if you don't get it in four weeks before the event, I think we need we, to look at that. We're just not going to do it because they're going to appeal to you after they get the denial from staff. Well, if we have it, if we have it written out that you have to have it, that's pretty easy explanation. Rachel? Well, you know, I, I just can't help but draw the contrast with somebody like a ESPN and the X Games who at this point are, you know, really well trained in, <laughs> more than willing to deal with any issues as they arise, participate in a debrief after the event so that, you know, everyone's on the same page. But kind of separate from that, it would seem like we might be able to start to put together a bit of a list of people who've done these type of events or their mailing addresses or whether from past applications or however, you know, maybe some Googling <laughs> bicycle tour operators, I, I don't know what, and, and be able to have a better outreach tool as new rules are passed and even early on it can be as a um, courtesy up heads up you know we want to let you know we've had problems with operators in the past we're tightening our rules we need to see your applications in a much more timely fashion especially if they're repeat folks who we work with already but there are uh, any number of organizers who put that sort of things together and you know I don't know if it is the same sort of event planners that we worked with with the rural and remote special event venues but I would imagine that some of them may be contacted or some of them may organize activities for larger groups that come into town. Okay. One last thing. Yeah. Just, you know, I, uh, as, as somebody who used to apply for permits and, and have to get things done, so when we were making television commercials, often you'd get somebody who wanted to come in a week 
later. It was so tight. Uh, it would be nice if we can figure out how to create criteria so it's not onerous for somebody who's doing something so simple that they could actually accomplish something in a short time frame. And it doesn't take eight weeks to get a permit for a simple enough thing, a photo shoot on a house or one piece yeah. of land yeah. or something. So it's so it doesn't just create a, a rule that makes it too onerous, the hurdle's too high for everyone. We've done that in the past with some exceptions, yeah. but yeah, it's so very I know it strict. works, but I want to just put a, a word in that we're not trying to make it no. really hard for everybody. That's not the point. The point is to streamline it for the customer and for us as well and be thorough and, public and fair. Safety. Right. Steve? Yeah, I'm picturing some of the events that Snowmass Village has uh, one being the Tough Mudder, which most of the event is actually in Snowmass Village, but they're using parking down at the Rio Grande parking lot, and there's impacts on Brush Creek outside of Snowmass Village that that affect other people in the county. So how do we deal with that situation? Then they have the event like the Ragnar Relay, which is it's a great event to have it finish there it's great publicity for them they get you know people coming in filling up the beds but they're coming in on you know trails all the way from across half of Colorado to get here including or you know the Rio Grande Trail and uh, I don't know what all trails they use going up Brush Creek but we know them they actually permit with us, but it's yeah. the tough mutters. So they, that are, but that's yeah. that kind of thing. They need to coordinate between us and town of Snowmass Village. Which then, how do we simplify that process, or do they have to make separate applications to the two entities? Maybe there's a way to streamline that process too. At the same time, though. With Tough Mudder, though, they went through EOTC to get permission to use the lot. Did they contact Road, the county about using, I mean, just it was just a transit corridor with Brush Creek. That's right. There is, I think the, that level of coordination ended with just the use of the, of the lots. Okay. Um, there was one other thing. Oh, I, um, I had suggested some years back to the city of Aspen. Um, it didn't get anywhere, but to be thinking about having a no event event. Mm -hmm. In other words, and I was just thinking maybe one weekend out of the whole summer, and I just was talking to someone in the community and they said, how about once a month? <laughs> I said, that might be pushing it, but you know, it's like George was saying, it would be great if we had a weekend at some time in the summer for no events across the board, just so the community could, and we still have visitors and guests coming and going, you know, from the community, but it would be nice to just be able to sit back and take a deep breath. So that would be nice if we could have some thought given to that with all the municipalities that schedule events. We call it off season. We don't have an off season exactly. anymore. Yeah, it used to be So I'm calling right? in a no event event. So I tried, but we can always no, bring I've, it back. I think it's a fun idea. Well, I, I, would, go, I would go further. <laughs> I would just say we don't need events every weekend, um, period. And, and we know there's local organizations that are uh, fundraisers and charitable organizations locally that historically have done events, and we know who they are and um, work with them. But I'm really concerned about uh, organize, organizers from outside our community uh, that don't have an investment in community, they're just using it for uh, their marketing purposes, even though they may have, it may be charitable or not, but those dollars leave the community. Those are the, uh, those typically be the, are typically the larger events as well that, that uh, require more staff time uh, all the way across the board and have more impacts throughout our, our county. Those are the events, I uh, frankly, uh, you know, occasionally the Ride the Rockies we know is a very good, well-run event. You know, they move that event around the state, so maybe every six, eight years they're allowed to come in here, but uh, we don't have a, an ongoing continuation of, of events from outside the community. Okay, any more thoughts, questions? So well, I, I am going to just say, I think I'm kind of saying the same thing as George, but um, 
I think we do need to bear in mind that each one of our little communities has different uh, opportunities to have their events. So it gets hard to say whether it's a no event day or whatever. It, it's a little bit like people with irrigation water. It looks bad that you're spraying it at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, but you may only get your water from 2 o'clock to 4, and then the next guy does. And so uh, um, I, I don't want to seem anti-business for the communities. I mean, Snowmass is on an upswing now, but they were really hurting for quite a while. And um, same with basalt and those communities coming out of the recession. So um, I agree with a real or lasting way, but it does get hard. Uh, I think a lot of these, whether it's the art foundation in this community or that community, they, they try not to have their events on the same days as other events because they know they can't draw the crowd. And so, you know, it, we all know what it's like in the summer. You have three different choices every night, a music tent then, a theater in the park tent, or, you know, a free concert in snow mass or something. It's pretty hard to tell people you have to be a loser. You can't have an event during the prime week of July when all your second homeowners might be here, you know. So I, I think we have to bear in mind that there are local considerations that might be a little different from ours. But that's entirely different from public health, safety, and general welfare. Yeah, but we as the county could start out with we will not have an event on this at this we will not allow an event so at least we could we can't tell the municipalities what to do but we can hopefully tell ourselves what to do and that we will have you know on this weekend and quiet weekend. yeah weekend. we will have a quiet weekend the you know right after july 4th when we've had a crazy weekend and just so nothing happens in the county's parameters but you know this is it's just up for discussion so it'll be interesting to see what you guys can put up put together and bring back to us how about, how about a darkness, quiet, and solace festival? Somebody That'll will draw find a way to celebrate 20, that one. People, so <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Everybody would come. It's going to be quiet in Aspen. We're all going. It's never going to be quiet. Mm -hmm. uh, the reality is the Rio Grande and our assets are being used heavily, even without events. So it's a capacity issue, too, with the events. And that's why we've been working really hard on trying to get the events to do early mornings, to do it at times when the trails aren't super busy. But some of these events are so large, it's just not. And so it, we'll, we'll, I think we can come back with something, but it's, it's a big discussion. It'd be so. great. So yeah. we'll be ready for you to bring it back, okay. Cindy. Yeah, and just um, one of the reasons we brought this to you now is because we're prepping for our budget season, and we just wanted to have the information in front of you so that you will know why when and you bring what that we've forward. looked at. Um, relative to that and all of our different departments getting together on this one. So we want the plan totally organized, all, every, all, everybody yeah. we're going to impact contacted, and a new ordinance written for the sheriffs to do enforcement. Okay, no problem. Yeah. We look forward to it. Thanks, guys. Thank we you. appreciate well, thank it. thank you. It's a good Thanks start, I think. And it's something we've been talking about doing, so I'm glad it's coming forward to us. All right, the board's going to move on to review a future agenda calendar since we have Phyllis Matthijs helping us out today since Mr. Peacock is on a world tour of colleges. And I don't have anything particular, but I will research a joint meeting with Snowman. Okay. Let's see if we can get that figured out. I have a few things. Does any other member of the board have anything on the future agendas? Not yet. Okay. I do have some things circled. Um, on Tuesday, September 4th, we will be hearing at 2-3 the airport air service update. Um, I would like for somebody to notify Woody Creek Caucus because it was their concern that our airport service update was out of date. So I would like for them to know that we are actually reviewing it, the new, the new update. Um, and Pat, I, Patty, can yes. I just, but yeah. we, we should notify them, but we should also let them know it's a work session. Yeah, and, there's no public comment. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then um, I just saw on the 12th of September, we have the proclamation for the Pitkin County time capsule. Will we be burying, putting it underground then that day? Right. So um, I think that's great. And I think the public hopefully will be here for that. And um, um, on th Tuesday, September 18th, work session again. And um, we start off with a recycling discussion. Um, would you please ask staff if they would like us to invite someone from the city or if there's people from the city already coming? I think that's, I think they're probably already invited. I just want to make sure because the city's definitely going to be part of that discussion. Um, 
And I think, and then I see we're doing the 2019 budget overview <laughs> for two hours on October the 9th. So obviously we're gearing up for the budget process. That's the kickoff meeting. Yes. And you'll see quite a few other budgets following that. I've noticed that. So those are the only thing I have so far. Anyone else? Steve? On the September 12th meeting, the White Tip Ranch application, I happen to know that that property is for sale and perhaps will even be under contract by that time, but just to be aware that it, this might be a moot, moot point by then, and I guess at that point, if that happens, then um, the community development would just say, you know, pull it off that the would, agenda. Mm -hmm. But uh, that is a distinct possibility that they'll want to pull pull their application. And I would, yeah, I would double check on that. They may want it part of their application and part of their sale. And I think it was up for it's sale still, it's still It's still a policy decision, regardless of, of who buys it or not. The policy decision is whether we want to allow dogs on that property. So regardless, I think that's that needs to come before us, and we need to have a policy decision. Unless the owner is planning to sell to somebody who doesn't want dogs. Or unless they pull their application. As, right. as long as it's in process, yeah. it should come before us regardless of ownership. Right. And if they yeah. themselves pull their application, that's different. Yeah. And I think it's been for sale for a while anyway. I mean, we would enforce the existing code would remain. Right. Yeah. 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 Anything else on the agendas? No, I don't think so. We're not to a point of having a date for the Christmas party or anything like that yet, are we? Uh, <laughs> I'm just wondering. I know I, I've just gotten some conference uh, invites. There's a large healthcare invite for the first uh, week of December, and uh, you don't uh, want to miss that party. I know, but that's why I'm kind of wondering before I uh, reserve a ticket. I for have one too coming up. So can okay. we? Yeah. I'll, I'll find out. I know we were talking about it when we were doing budget because we. And, were and it doesn't matter party. where. We just need to know the date that yep. they're shooting for. Yeah, because I, okay. I want to go to that I'm home conference. Yeah. I didn't even think of that, Rachel. Good point. Thank you. Anybody okay. else? All right. Can we move to open discussion? I can start off quickly, Phyllis, if that's okay. Yep. Okay. Um, ACRA. ACRA, and I'm going to pass this on to Charlotte. ACRA's having their, um, it's called the Afternoon Blend. It's the event they do up at the Sun Deck. It's great. It's a huge community turnout. It's um, scheduled for sep Thursday, September the 6th, so it's coming up. Um, it's from 3 to 4, upload, oh, three to f program is 3 to 4, then social hours from 4 to 5, upload the gondola at 2.30. Um, we do have to reserve and buy tickets. Uh, I will give Charlotte this information for anybody who wants to reserve a seat. It's really a great local event. Um, that is also the same night as the Colorado Parks and Wildlife Barbecue that they invited us to, that they're having down at Bear Ranch. And I, I'm not going to attend either. I've got a commitment. But um, if we do have that. anyone who is going to attend the Parks and Wildlife, uh, we should RSVP. And, you know, maybe maybe some of our open space and trails folks could represent for us if we, we can't. None of the board can. I was planning to go to that, but I'm going to go to the ACRA since of I sit on the board. Member. Yeah. yeah. So anyhow, Thanks. just throw that out there that we'll try to find someone for the Parks and Wildlife Barbecue, either staff or yeah, any other uh, board members. I had just, uh, my schedule had been up in the air on the 6th and the 7th, but I just decided that I'm going to, I'd like to go to the Parks and Wildlife thing and then go to the Club 20 the next morning. Right. So it, uh, rather It'll than work. do something else that was yeah. going on. That'd be great to have somebody So that way we could cover both, you know, yeah, have I'll somebody let, at both Well, you events. just send an RSVP and Steve. I'll let yeah. Perry know because I think Perry. he was planning on me bringing him a homemade pie peach or pie or cherry pie. But and I, I believe John's going to the afternoon blend. Yeah, it's, it's a great event. Okay, I wish I could. But I'll, Charlotte will have the information if anybody wants to go. Um, uh, anything envelopes thing? I've got a board of health meeting that afternoon, so I'm Sorry, but I'm going to miss the CPW and ACRA. Yeah. Yeah. George? No. Okay. Is everyone's microphone's no. on? She's knacking at us. <laughs> um, so any other, um, any other open discussion? Steve? Well, there was the email we got about the Colorado Health Institute uh, event that's coming up. and um, That's the one I was checking in to see where the Christmas party is going to be. 
Yeah, and it was, Rachel and I were at it last year, and it was an, really an excellent thing. And I, I was thinking it would be good if Greg went, as since you're on the Board of Health, and I don't even remember what day it was. It was an email we got, yeah, I've got today, that and they said there's 10, com they're inviting 10 commissioners to get free registration. But it, it was it really a well-run uh, and well-worthwhile event last year. I believe it's Thursday the 6th and Friday the 7th. Uh, it's down in Englewood. Of what month? Of December. December. Yeah, I saw that email. Yeah, uh, and I haven't RSVP'd. And, you know, it's nice they're offering... 10 free to counties, but if those go away, because other counties have gotten them and, and one member of our board can attend, we still should send somebody. I'll put it on my calendar. I'd actually emailed Catherine to say, I, I don't know if it's worthwhile. I want to find out if it's something worth going to. But you've been and you Last yeah. year, it was really well worthwhile. I learned so much. December 6th through? And the 7th. I, that's what I have down now, two days. December? Yeah. Don't miss the holiday party for the county. We don't know well, what that's, where, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's why I'm pulling the calendar up and trying to yeah. find out. Um, okay, so that's a Thursday, Friday. Yeah, that's they have different being... major topics yeah, sure. each time, and I'm not sure what the topic is this time. They had a summer one in August, and it was interesting, but it was conflicting with some of the stuff I have. So they do they do them twice a year. Yeah, and you might check the agenda, actually. Yeah, as they, we have get, and they may or may already. not have formed it fully yeah, yet. Yeah, that we don't know. I think uh, the summer may have focused on mental health. Anything else on open discussion? Um, I have one other thing that um, I want to t run by the board. Rachel, you brought it up, and it was a great idea, and a member of the public actually asked me about it, uh, about the, the concern for water regulations um, restrictions in the county. I explained that the county doesn't have a water you know, service, um, but um, she was concerned about the use of the car wash at the ABC. They are on city water, therefore they are, have to follow the stage two water restrictions. But I would like the county to do a public service announcement on water and water restrictions right now. I talked with Kurt Dahl last week to say, could you start putting something together um, with maybe Pat Bingham, see if we can do a little radio or a little newspaper ad saying even though by the county doesn't we would like you to really look at the, your use of water or something to that nature. Yeah. Um, so that we look, so not so we look like, so that we are doing something to educate the public water users in the county. And I just needed to run it by the board to get a nod of approval before we can pass it on and have something come out in the paper. I, I think that'd be great. I, you know, uh, obviously coordinating with John Ely's office to make sure that it's somewhat accurate and, um, you know, uh, as you're saying, it, the, most of our uh, folks are on well systems or in small package uh, facilities. Um, and th the ones who are multiple providers probably are well aware that they're, they're running low, but that it does uh, deplete the aquifer. And uh, up until recently, we haven't had the rainfall to recharge it. So, so if we could, I think it'd be, it'd be smart to work with John and with Kurt Dahl said he'd start looking into it. And we should loop in the Healthy, Communi uh, healthy Rivers and Stream Fund. Yeah. To make sure they're aware of it and not yeah. in, uh, filling out of the loop. So you got that, Phyllis. Is everybody okay with that? Just doing a small public service announcement about water restrictions and mm -hmm. yeah, water wise? I mean, we don't have water restrictions. So it's just more of an education. Yeah, that's what I'm saying is that we can enforce water restrictions, but these are th the things that the, the water users in Picking County need to be aware of. Yeah. So I, yeah. I mean, I, I don't know who else has seen this, but just informationally, um, the River District is yeah, having a is. webinar coming up. And they have new predictions on Lake Powell where they believe there is a basically break even about a 50 percent chance that by the year 2020, Powell will be below the power generation point. And so uh, that starts to affect all Western waters and uh, the utilities and money for the endangered fish program and all sorts of things. Uh, so um, they're, they're like around the corner. Yeah, and if anyone else is interested in attending, just so you're aware, the uh, River District's annual meeting is going to be uh, September 14th, Friday, which uh, I don't know if anyone else saw this, but um, I think Jack Hatfield's uh, services are going to be that day from 4 to 7.30 p.m. What the, I thought they hadn't set a date yet. I just got the email. Did what you, date was by that? Charlotte. Um, Thursday, uh, ex excuse me, Friday the 14th was what it said. I'm sure we all got the email. Charlotte just sent it out a few minutes ago um, from 
4.30 to 7 p.m. or something like that on the 14th. So it's at the same day as the River District thing, unfortunately. It might change things. Okay, sorry. Thursday, September 13th in is, the email. Oh, is that what it is? Mm-hmm. Okay. 4 to 7. Oh, 4 to 7 on the 13th. At Snowmash Chapel? At Snowmash Chapel. Okay, and then there will probably be, at some point, the one hell of a party that Jack has requested, <laughs> which is perfect. So the email says something will come out in the paper with donations in lieu of flowers. Perfect. And then at that time, um, I would also like to, Rachel, thank you for bringing her. Jack up to my attention again, not that I have forgotten him for one minute since we heard about Jack Hatfield's passing away on Friday. Um, I would like the board to do a proclamation uh, at a time when Ruth or somebody can be here to accept it. Um, and we'll put, I'm sure Pat Bingham can do an amazing job of putting together some well-chosen words about our buddy Jack. And, um, and at that time, I think at some point when we know about where um, donations, contributions, and Jack's memory can be made. The board can make a decision on that. But um, I think that would be really important for us to honor him in that manner. And, um, mm -hmm. and, and it might be hard for Ruth to be here. I know she's spending time this week with Jack's family um, in Florida, I believe. Mm -hmm. So uh, Bill, um, Bill Bueno is a good contact for us in, in handling any of this. So that would be great. And we're going to miss Jack. Mm -hmm. He's the character that he was in the life of the party he will always be in our memory right anything else before we yes steve i do have one more thing um we have to decide for the who is going to represent us at cci as a legislative committee so it'd be either me or rachel and the meeting is on they've October called a special 12th. meeting Oh, that was new. I didn't know yeah, that. Yeah, no. Um, well, you two can hash it out and let us know. And it's sort of, I was kind of thinking Rachel's getting to the end of the road with CCI, and, and you might want to do it or you might not want to oh, do it. Oh, I want to do it, Steve. <laughs> it's okay, like the, your last. We just appointed Rachel to do it that, It would be Steve. Rachel's yeah. last big chance to really influence yeah. what uh, CCI's uh, so legislative agenda is I'll be this seeing Rachel coming again, year. I have a feeling. Yeah, they, um, I'm not sure I have both dates in my calendar, but on the 28th, September 28th, is when they're going to have a discussion of their potential legislative items that all counties have submitted, and they've added a special meeting so they can see if the membership would like to take a position on any of the statewide ballot issues. Okay. Um, there is then a follow-up. Yes, I am planning on being there. And um, then I think the 12th of October is when there'll be the voting for actually adopting the legislative agenda. Rachel, you will be there. I will yeah, be there. And then I'm not sure what the, how the form reads, but I could be an alternate. If, That's if, right. If, That's if I sure. step out to the restaurant. That's fine with everybody else. <laughs> fine with everybody else. Yeah, and we'll just make sure that form is sent back into Jeannie de Havilland in time. Okay. Just sent it out. Okay, thanks, Steve. All right, anything else? Okay. Do we need to go into executive? No, I need a motion to go to a special meeting and a purpose of executive session for the purposes of, how come it's not on my agenda? Oh, the Pilt Class Action Lawsuit, CRS 2464024B. So moved. Second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Right, we are in executive session. We will meet upstairs in the conference room in the attorney's office. Thank you, Grassroots. Thanks, Grassroots. Thanks for adjusting the mics. <laughs>